Hey up, Woodlanders. What a stunning morning again. It's cool. But it's dry. Oh, is that a buzzard? It's a buzzard. You won't see that. Sorry. Tempting you in with buzzards and you won't actually see it. This morning so far, we have gone out and delivered some charcoal to Nigel. Charcoal sales have been just a little bit on the slow side at the moment. Then popped up to Kilworth for another cable for the other secret project. Did a quick scrap run as well this morning because I've got to get rid of some junk. My other jobs today are go and cut some pea sticks. What it is, if you cut pea sticks in my experience too early, they all dry out. The frost gets to them and they all dry out. So really you want to be cutting pea sticks around about March time, but in March time I finished cutting hazel pretty much. So I'm going to have a quick look down the bottom end to see if I can find anything that resembles a pea stick. It would have been nice to get some extraction on today on the tractor, but I've got a funeral this afternoon and one or two other bits and pieces to do after that, but I've got to get done. So a track today was, just wasn't working. difficult one with pea sticks those ones I just gathered they were from some hazel rather than it being hazel that's in the coppice I went on a search for hazel that had self-set and was coming up in the canopy of other trees and just nipped out the tumbles if I was getting a couple of hundred out it would be a no and I wouldn't do it for me it's just a little bit late in the season really now it's nearly May should be cutting May and Hazel. Should be cutting May and Hazel. Should be cutting May and Hazel. I know some do. They cut Hazel all year round. I just thought I'd prep a few bean poles because it's now bean pole season and I get contacted virtually every day now for bean poles. Well, I've got half an hour and prep some, point them. They'll be here ready then. When the orders come flying in, I'm hopeful that we will sell out again this year and that the bean growers and the sweet pea growers will continue to use hazel rods instead of some of the imports that we get. That way, I survive, they get a natural product. And he keeps the woodland surviving. It was great having a wander around looking for the pea stick because I sort of ventured into parts of the woodland that I don't often go into. I should, but I don't. It's amazing what you see. I found bluebells in places I can't remember planting them. I found white fritillaries in places I didn't realise they were planted. I've never seen them before. I can only imagine I have planted them or somebody in the family has. But I haven't. Well, I don't remember. Which is always a nice little surprise. Seeing things that you didn't realise were growing. It's brilliant, I love that. I'm just thinking about the wildlife camera. I can't remember where I put it. <laughs> I might go and have a search for it in a minute because I wouldn't mind having a look to see what images we've got. I just want to try and get a little bit of extraction done by hand. I've got to pop off to a funeral. I'll see you in the morning. And I'm just hoping it doesn't rain too much. See you then.
Good morning. What a stunner this morning is. Look at that. Welcome to Woodland Paradise here in the National Forest. I mean, don't look at that. It's not quite paradise there, but if you look at that, it's a bit more positive. We had a bit of a frost this morning, just a little bit of a minus two, minus three, I think, this morning. It's not good for the sweet chestnut, and it's not good for the blossoms. But the sweet chestnuts, are special up here, they just about yesterday, I noticed, the leaves are just about to pop out. And what happens is the frost comes and it burns all the leaves. It's really frustrating. They sort of survive it, but it's not great. What you usually find is as the sweet chestnuts get taller, they get away from the ground frosts and so they don't suffer as much then because you don't tend to get air frosts in April, May but you do still get ground frosts and that's what can just knock them about a little bit. Little robin caught me there. First mission this morning, I'm gonna get my trailer loaded up ready for tomorrow. Tomorrow is fitting day of the gates and the panels. So that's Stuart. And that's Mr. H's. I mentioned yesterday, I wanted to find what I'd done with my Camera. I've left my wildlife camera somewhere. It's a little bit like a needle in a haystack because honestly I cannot remember what I've done with it. And when you've got aha, close to 5,000 trees, you're like, what have I done with my action camera? Anyway, let's see, look. Let's examine some photos, shall we? Very interesting. Oh, I'm glad I found that. So now I've located the camera, I'm going to reposition it and hopefully not forget where I've put it. I want to reposition it because I think where the woodland meets the field might be a good spot to see some stuff coming in and out. All set up again. Let's see what we catch this time. It's not one of them camera traps that finds some rare wild cat thing. It's nice to see what's about at night time, really. I was at a funeral yesterday. That was a lady called Jackie. Old lady in her 80s. We've known her in, our family's known her for, ooh, as long as I can remember. Since what stood out to me was how close the family are. Just a small little family in a small little village. And Jackie was always the kingpin of the family. Kept everyone together. See how touching that was, really nice. Does anybody know what a white butterfly is with orange tips on its wings? I keep seeing them. I could Google it, but I'd just like to get you guys involved. What is a white butterfly with orange tips on its wings, like, like an orange blob? on the corner of, top corner of its wings. Here it is, look, here it is, there, there, there. That's the one. Stunning mean little butterfly, moth, butterfly, butterfly, we'll go for that. Have a search for us. Let me know what you think in the comments. Quick switch. Okay. I think I've decided my first job is to go and get the rest of the hedge lane stakes out. You might remember the spike zone from the brush cutting days.
quick update managed to find some bean poles and another pile of hedge lane stakes in fact I think we've got somewhere close to about a hundred hedging stakes out of this bit and that was only from sort of here up because here down I cut that earlier last year about September time just to get some stakes for an order so that's done really well about a hundred stakes out of that it's not a lot of stakes but that's all a bonus and then we've still got some weaving rods we've got to dress We're getting there slowly there's a bit more pine down there but I think that's gonna have to be ringed up in situ because there's no way I can lift it give you a pan round we've got just there is firewood pile just there is stuff for the charcoal more firewood and then rods rods charcoal rods charcoal it just goes on and on, and on. what a stunning day. It's just amazing. Look after the corners. It's funny how smells bring back memories. About 150 years ago we used to go to Greece a lot. And go on holiday in Greece, not a lot, but perhaps once a year or once every two years. And we always used to use this sun cream. The smell reminds me of being on a beach in Greece. It's not quite the same, it's still a lovely day. Boom. It's it's just roomy shot. That was meant to be a really one of those cool sort of walking in, walking out shots. Ruined. Well, that was a little workout, wasn't it? High stepping through the forest. If nothing else, I've saved a gallon of diesel. Maybe I haven't actually wasted that much time by hand extraction, because by the time I've driven it on the tractor, driven home on the tractor, got it out in the morning, done the trailer, got the van off, put the van back on. Why not do a bit of hand extracting? But I think next we'll go and do a little bit of rod dressing. We'll try and get some of that done. I really don't think I'm going to get all that done today. Just a quick one while I've got your attention. You know my Johnny Vegas poles I sold a couple of weeks ago. Well I thought, you know what, I ought to watch his programme. So I did, I watched Carry On Glamping. But honestly I was pleasantly surprised. Edited, well, entertaining, it was sad. It was sort of exciting, they kept you on the edge. And it turns out he's got quite a soft sensitive sort of bloke and that comes through in the program so it's not just about how he sets up the glamping site but he looks at, at the inner bloke as well and his what it how he thinks and feels and how 
some of the challenges he gets he has and how he gets over them and the team he works with anyway i can't say watch it because that's entirely up to you but if you fancy watching it give johnny vegas some love and go and have a watch at carry on glamping and you might be pleasantly surprised like me Today is one of those special days where you just feel everything's gone right. Well, in my world anyway, I don't know what your world, what's your world like? Has your world gone right today? I try to keep my world simple today. Simple jobs up the woods, by hand, no machinery, stunning weather, not too hot. Still, not too many midges. I've managed to get done what I wanted to and possibly even more besides, which is always a good thing. And there's nothing like a funeral to reevaluate your own little world, what's important, what's not. I heard a good quote this morning, it said, if I die tomorrow, this is assuming of course I'm employed, but I'm not employed, I'm self-employed. Assuming you're employed, you die tomorrow, yes, your employer may be sad, but your job would be back on the board next week, and he would fill your boots, but your family, they'll miss you for the rest of their days. And I just thought what an interesting way to evaluate what's actually important and what he was basically saying was, don't spend all of your life thinking that work is the most important thing, because it isn't. Because you can easily be replaced, whereas to your family, you are irreplaceable. So today, I think I could have topped 90% which is a very nice feeling. And I was trying to think really, what is it that helps me to evaluate my percentage? And oftentimes it's whatever the thought processes are going on in my mind. Do those thought processes trouble me all day? Do they drag me down? Do they, do they make me feel negative about something? Or possibly even someone? Do they cause me stress and worry and you know what I've had hardly any of those thoughts today and that's why I think I can properly evaluate today as being a 90% day and as I said that is a very nice feeling so let me know what percentage you're on I know I ask this every week and you're probably getting fed up with it now. But honestly, I am genuinely interested in how you're getting on. I wish I could make your world better if it isn't going so well. Which I can't, but I'm more than happy to listen.
that's great. That's perfect, thanks for that. Right. Yeah. Right, thanks for that. This morning's went well. And it's a stunning day, really. See you in the morning. Hello. Oh, we had some rain last night. Again. This morning, that nip out over to Melbourne and re-measure a job because when I first went, I went in the car. I don't have any measuring equipment in the car and I forgot my tape measure. Anyway, we've got our measurements, so that's all good. And then shortly, I'm going to have a quick look at the fences. There's some fences over in that direction, but I have noticed that some of the posts have rotted off. So we'll show the fence line some love for an hour and go and get the post rammer out. Try not to smash my head in. Today feels more like one of those regrouping days where you sort of build up to a particular job or task which for me was Wednesday, getting those two panel installations done on Wednesday and then today feels like ah, I've got that done, tick that off we'll just regroup, make an assessment of where we're at work out what's happening next week this is my first ever attempt at cleaving hazel into a panel what I call very loosely a Westmoreland style panel it had a bit of an ash top rail and bottom rail and I used a uh, sweet chestnut for the posts so that there and the one this side is there and after 10 years 
the sweet chestnut post on this side has had it and that's what's caused it really to start to collapse I think it may have held together just that little bit longer because if you just cast your eye over to there that is also one I did at exactly the same time and that one because the posts have survived the panel has basically survived I just wanted to update you that has been 10 almost 11 years since this was built and installed it wasn't very good at the start I must admit but that hasn't lasted too bad at all and I think if the top rail had lasted and if that left hand side post had lasted this panel may well have lasted just that little bit longer maybe got another two years out of it here we are at the fence line so last year one of the first ever videos was putting that post in there it looks like the very next stake has gone down so we'll give that some attention give me a minute while I get some staples It's not perfect, but we're sort of stock proof again. It's looking a bit better, I wouldn't say that is what I call top-notch fencing. But as far as I know on this western boundary, every stake is now pretty secure. Near the buzzards. Next job for me then is, look at the shadows, that's awesome. Is this one here, is no good. Man. I'm afraid that's all folks for this week. I'll see you on the next woodlock. Thanks for watching. See you soon. If you're able to enjoy the beautiful 